Thanks for watching Ben Television. The program is still You Decide. We say it, you decide it. And uh, right now we have our own in-house sociologist, uh, Lady Yemi Akiola. Lady Yemi, you're welcome to the program. Good yeah. morning. Good morning, Dr. Yeah, Good morning. but well, yeah, that's the correct position, isn't it? Yes, I am a sociologist. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> so we need to know that one so that we know the kind of question we pose to you. Um, we have a, a very important personality calling in from Europe. Actually, is the chairman of Continental Europe NIDO and is here with us. He'll be Skyping us. Uh, so can we please have uh, Mr. Kenneth Bandy? Hello, sir. Hello. Uh, we're trying to locate you on the Skype so that does it. Honorable Kenneth Bandy, it's so nice to see you face to face. It's my pleasure, sir. Yeah, yeah what, what's the country you are calling from in Europe? I'm, I'm calling from Germany, sir. Oh, from Germany. I hope you guys are not crying over Mexico. No, we are not, but we are trying, we are, we are going to make it up. <laughs> are you better? How are you, sir? Do you want to introduce yourself so that our viewers can know who they are meeting with? Well, I'm, I'm the Continental Chair of a Nigerian Diaspora Organization, uh, NIDO for short, um, elected in 2016 in Athens. And then, um, yeah, I've been managing that uh, for the past uh, uh, close to two years. And before then, I've been the chairman of NIDO Germany also. Okay, NIDO has got something great to do this year in London. How did you manage to get the Nigerian government to work in tandem with NIDO for the diaspora day? Well, like you know, every 25th of uh, July is uh, marked by the federal government, gazetted, as a diaspora day. And this has been taking place for the past uh, uh, couple of years, eight years to be precise, thereabout. And then we have an issue that every year, uh, up to the dying minute, we are still not sure if the federal government uh, is uh, trying to organize the event or not. So after our last uh, Nigerian Diaspora Day 2017, uh, we decided that probably it's time we do something different, uh, where the diaspora will have to host the Diaspora Day uh, in, in, in outside Nigeria. So that's the origin of that. And so far, we've been, we managed to get um, uh, the continental uh, diasporans and to support that. So we'll be organizing the conference in UK for sure. Um, we're expecting the Honorable Chairperson on Diaspora Affairs, uh, Honorable Rita Oji. Uh, we're also expecting the, um, the SSA to the President on Diaspora Affairs, Honorable Apike Dabiri. Uh, so these are the two important uh, um, diaspora elements in the federal government and in Nigeria. And so with the presence of those two, uh, two individuals, uh, we're very happy that the government is fully represented. At that diaspora day, is it going to be business discussion, investment discussion? Is it going to be wanting to know what uh, the diasporas are ready to give Nigeria so that we can be prepared? And you want us to register. Is it at Eventbrite? We are registering on where? Yes, sir. That is uh, one of the areas you can register and also, also on the NIDO uh, uh, website. What we're basically doing is a diaspora conference. It's a, a developmental conference, which we tagged the, you know, supporting the diaspora roadmap uh, of the federal government. And we'll be talking about the state of the economy in Nigeria. We'll be talking about the land of opportunity in Nigeria, unfortunately for the few. We'll be looking at the election 2019 and the roles of the diaspora, as well as migration and development. But most importantly, most importantly, we are going to be flagging off the diaspora registration, which is um, um, the diaspora big data. Diaspora registration is going to be uh, simply populating the national ID card system uh, of the federal government uh, by the agency of NIMC. It is very crucial because what we have had in the past years about the diaspora is that how many are we? We don't know. Um, how are we spread spatially? Uh, who is doing what? We cannot vote because um, the diaspora voting rights is not going to be possible because we don't know who is staying here, who is staying where, and who is doing what. So we you got the word out of my mouth. Will the diaspora register be linked with voting rights? Well, uh, if it comes to pass. Together. Uh, the excuses they keep giving us is that we, they don't know how many we are, they don't know who is, who is uh, staying where, and so because of that, they cannot plan. So with the flagging off of diaspora registration, we're going to put this argument to a rest once and for all. And then we're kicking it off in the UK. Okay. Um, the, the, 
is it not a Herculean task trying to know the number of Nigerians living in Europe because some of us, we are still in the process, living, listen to me carefully, in the process of regularizing our stay. And we may not particularly want to be in the limelight of the immigration centers, if you get my drift. So how do you Absolutely. handle that? One of the things we, we, we fought to is that we have uh, maintained that the, the data of Nigerians have to reside with Nigerians and have to reside by the federal government. So the agency mandated to take care of these Nigerian data is called NIMC, National ID Card Management Commission. So they are going to be warehousing these data. All we are trying to do is simply uh, to help mobilize Nigerians in diaspora to populate this. I absolutely agree with you. We have, it has nothing to do, the, the data has nothing to do with the government of Germany, of UK, or anywhere you're residing. Office to start scrutinizing no, who is no, who. No way. It's absolutely a Nigerian affair. Okay, that's good to know for some of us. Uh, my colleagues want to ask you a question. Yemi wants to ask you a question. Please, sir. Good morning. Good morning, man. Good morning. How are you? My name is Lady Yemi. Um, it's a good initiative that you are, you are bringing on board and it's, it's very welcome at this time as well, especially since we're looking at elections 2019. My question for you though is that um, I have attended a few of these um, events in Nigeria. The, I've attended one, um, twice in Abuja and it was not well organized. There were so many things that were not put together. And of course, the theme of it was not, we didn't really know what we were doing and, and how we were going to go about it. Now you're bringing it to the UK. Of course, this is a very popular um, destination. What exactly are you going to do differently? And how is that going to impact Nigeria that we want to affect? Another thing is that it, the, the popular notion is that a lot of people that put these events together is because they themselves are seeking positions in Nigeria, political positions. Obviously, there's nothing wrong with that. But is there going to be a procedure by which people are recognized so that it's not just everybody jumping on board because they want to get something from the federal government? You can, you can have the intention of serving in Nigeria, but is there going to be a procedure after you've you know, registered your interest? You got the question right. Yeah, yes, some yeah, answer. absolutely. I will, try, I will try to. Now, what are we going to do differently? The, the essence of bringing this event from Nigeria to, to United Kingdom um, is because we believe that we want to do things differently from what has been done in the past. I, I, I will say that with my colleagues from Nido America, we basically funded the last diaspora in 2017. And I maintain this here that we don't have any business funding government gazetted programs if they cannot provide a fund for that. So I would prefer to provide a fund here in Europe and uh, to be able to do that. So definitely our, our conference is project driven. Uh, I mentioned the flagging off of the diaspora database because it is one of the most important thing for the diaspora. Uh, uh, the moderator mentioned that already. The voting right has to be tied off the diaspora. Um, uh, the, even the, the, the private sectors, they want to know who, how many Nigerians do we have in diaspora, even if we don't have the total accurate number, but at least we have an estimated number of how many people we're having. Basically, we're going to be launching the $20 million, uh, $20 million diaspora investment fund where the diaspora can have the opportunity to own their own houses in Nigeria, either for a personal use or for commercial use. But the diaspora have the first right of refusal. So these are what we are planning to do, which is definitely what they have not done in the past. I mean, this is going to be historic that we are flagging off the diaspora registration. It's going to be historic that for the first time, the diaspora are launching their own investment fund independent of, uh, of the government. Now, if you look at the third sector of the day, which is called uh, the election 2019, what we have basically uh, put together, we recognize the fact that NIDO is an apolitical. We are not a, business, we are not a political party and we are not intended to be one. But we are saying that if we can remit uh, 32 billion uh, um, uh, US dollars in 2015, 2016, uh, which is bigger than the budget of Nigeria, the diaspora have a right, they have a say in the affairs of Nigeria. So politically, even if most of us are not going to vote, personally, I have my voters can I intend to travel to Nigeria to cast my vote. But even if most of us are not going to vote, we have the right to call the political parties to say, hello, let us know what is your strategy to engage the diaspora? Uh, what are you? What are your plans for them? It's only when we know that then we can now, you know, work with the individuals, or to say that 
any political party that uh, you know reach out to the diaspora uh, are the, the political party we will ask our people to think about supporting example for instance if i have a, a political party that have a manifesto that says that it's going to make sure that diaspora uh, voting right is going to be signed within 24 hours or within 24 uh, 24 uh, months of election i will probably vote for such a for such a political party for instance if i have the one that said that three four five ministerial position especially the ones that relate to foreign affairs to diaspora and the rest of them is going to or are going to come from diaspora i would definitely vote for such a political party so what we are calling them to do in london is to interact with them to know exactly what are their plans to integrate diaspora the so-called the cash cow of the of nigeria that are remitting uh, have such a huge remittance what plans do you have for them and a lot Dennis, of uh, 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 themselves. My, my other colleague has a question and after his question i have one other serious question Okay, Otuma. I hope it's not going to be too serious, sir. They're very, very serious. <laughs> uh, yeah, good morning. Good morning, sir. The guest in it. Thank you, Sean. Now, my question is this. Uh, it might be too late now to get uh, diasporans to vote. We've been fighting on that. And I'm happy to hear that uh, the, the basic uh, uh, groundwork is going to be done by you by getting the data in place so we can use that as a, as a parameter to get us the voting right, which is fine. Now, the question is, why we are at that? You will agree with me that the 2019 is just around the corner. Now, what is the, and when you look at the, 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 the large number of our people all over the world, you, you're dealing with, the, you are the chairman of the Continental, which means to me, all over the place. So what plan are you putting in place to educate our people, to educate our people back home? Well, I will tell you that in uh, Diaspora Day 2017, uh, which uh, um, fortunately we have the Continental Chair of America, Continental Chair of Africa, and the representative of Nido Asia, we had a closed door section with the, uh, with the commissioners of INEC, uh, including the, uh, the chairman of INEC. Uh, it was a, a so, such a closed meeting that even the journalists were sent out of the meeting. Um, we are briefed on the efforts made so far by the National Assembly as well as INEC. Uh, to to uh, to um, to um, uh, make diaspora voting possible, I will not want to give them a back door by saying that they are really really working on that. No, I would not like to give them that back door, even if I think they have been doing a, a good work, a great job on that. But I want to key into your into your into your um, your your suggestion. Uh, well, I don't know if 2019 is is too late. I I, I basically don't think it's too late. Uh, I know if we cannot vote for all the elections. We can probably take uh, the, the, the House of Rep or the gubernatorial election or the presidential election as a pilot project. Um, our, our, our vote might not, uh, let me be very careful in formulation, our vote might not necessarily be counted to make an impact, but at least to see how the, how the, 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 the strategy, the logistic will go. And so to, kick, to make the impact that it's a serious business and they need to do, they need to do. so I don't think it's too late. Have you ever thought who is a Nigerian? That is, in, in terms of voting rights. Uh, we are probably primary generation, but how about our children and grandchildren? And they are grown up. Will they be seen as Nigerians who could vote? Well, I like this your question. At least it's going to be a very important question, and it's, very, it's, a, it's a good one. Now, part of the closed door section meeting we had with INEC is exactly one of these questions you asked. What the, the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Who is it defined as a Nigerian? What does the constitution say about voting? Who is allow, uh, allowed to vote? And this is the constitutional requirement which neither yourself or myself uh, will change overnight. And these are the issues that they are trying to probably work out uh, at the National Assembly. And Here in London, we've always looked out for a Nigerian house that Nigerians could go, relax, eat, play, take their family. And we, we don't have, the Nigeria High Commission is a no-go area to any relaxing Nigeria. You either go there for your visa, for your passport. Outside of that, they don't even allow you in. No library to go. We're looking for a complex here where we will call the Nigerian House. Forget about Nigeria High Commission. They are not, they're there for official purposes. And uh, whether they are doing it right or wrong is not part of the question. The question 
is, are you thinking of getting us a Nigerian house where we could contribute money to build a place where we'll bring our family and where we will teach our children different languages? I mean, I'm getting some conception here. Well, if you just give me time, I know you are under time, but if you give me time, because this is one of my passion. Uh, before I joined the Nido, um, I became the Nido, uh, Nido Chair Germany and eventually Nido Chair Europe, I was elected into the Hamburg uh, Senate, Integration by Rad, uh, for, foreigners, uh, uh, for foreigners, and I was representing the continent of Africa, uh, the Bayrad. One of the things I was able to do, or I, I advocated for, was the establishment of African House in, in, in Hamburg. And I think that we could also do the same in UK. You are absolutely right. Now, with the, the pressure of Nido Worldwide, because most people will always ask, this Nido, uh, I keep on hearing Nido and Nido, what, what have they been able to impart? I think one of your, well, your asked that, that question. With the impact of the Continental Nido, we were able to pass the Diaspora Commission. We sent a representative to the, to the Senate and to the, uh, to the House of Assembly. They had a conference call. I'm on camera, I'm on record. Anybody can verify that fact. We had a, they had a conference meeting where they were able to finalize the Diaspora Commission, taking to the vice chair, uh, president, who was the acting president then, it was signed into law. Today, we have a Diaspora Commission. Now, why am I mentioning that? The Diaspora Commission is the motto, is the umbrella on how the federal government can engage with the diaspora. And under this Diaspora Commission, we will insist that part of the things we need to have is to have a Nigerian house in every country where Nigerians are populated, starting from UK. You can count on, you can count on that. Yes. All right. I'm yes. Totally just for clarification, Honorable, just ask this quick question. It, it's good that you mentioned the, um, the investment fund and the, the fact that you were looking at um, um, diasporans um, owning their own properties in, in Nigeria. I think that is a catch that um, the, the organization has used over the years. I remember one of the... Um, diaspora events that I attended in Abuja. That was the highlight of the event. And uh, a lot of people put their names down for land and for houses and all of that because yeah, remember that. <laughs> you remember that as well. So, you know, it's always a catch when you tell people living outside of the country to, that they're going to own their own homes because it's, it's one thing that a lot of people are looking forward to. Now we've heard this before. The last time we were told to put a diaspora fund together, I, I remember vividly that we were told that it would be used to um, re... re revamp the yeah. airport and all of that, that our monies, we should just bring our monies and put into that fund and they will use it for projects in Nigeria. But that did not in any way, you know... Uh, Materialize. It didn't even mean that we, we, you know, we were counted in any way. That was what they thought our funds could do as at that time. So what is going to be different now that we're, they're calling diasporas to come together and you're promising them that, because that is a catch, you're promising them that whatever happens, at least you can guarantee a home in Nigeria. Okay, thank you very much. Very, very important question. Um, what I want to assure you that although the, the, the NIDO Europe as a motto, as a sponsor of this project, it is purely a investment project. And I can tell you without giving out so much fat, because I don't know whether I'm allowed to give out those fat because of financial regulations, uh, the issuing house is going to be based in UK. Under the highest strict and law of investment of such that a fund investment. Mm. So it's going to be a purely business investment and it's not going to be business as real like Nido are going to run it. No, we are only the vehicle or the sponsors, but it's going to be purely an investment uh, fund. Now, uh, what is going to happen is that the diaspora have the first right of refusal, but it is not limited and exclusive for the diaspora, which means once the fund is floated, we are going to, the financial experts are going to give out all the, all the, all the nitty gritties involved in that. And there's going to be a, a closure, like all financial fund, a closure of probably 30 days or, or two or 60 days or 90 days. I'm not a financial expert. I don't want to put my hand in the fire for that. But once that is flagged off, it means that within that closing date, uh, we have to, that fund has to be floated. If we don't have the diaspora, like I said, diaspora have the, the first uh, sign of refusal. So if they, for any reason, we don't have enough diaspora, we're going to open it up to the public. Okay, okay, what because of because of, because of time, Honorable. Diaspora. Last question. There's just one question I want to ask the, hon the Honorable. Um, I know there's, there's um, NIDO, and there's another organization in the UK called uh, CANUC. 
Are oh, you no. guys working in conjunction for this diaspora day, or is it just a needle affair? Absolutely. And for the first time, I wouldn't say for the first time, but for the first time probably in five years, what we, one of the things we have achieved, we are not only working with Kanu, uh, Dr. Douglas, uh, Boma Douglas, uh, we're not only working with them, we are working with all the diaspora sister organizations, including Nidan, including Anit. Uh, in fact, Nidan and it, they are all going to be sending a representative for this, uh, for this uh, um, uh, conference. In, a, in, a, in addition to that, the, the Nigerian Social Cultural Organization, because this is about the diaspora, this is not about needle. So okay, Honorable, you know, you know we, work, we work with time, so we have given you beautiful time. But keep watching from Germany and make sure that nobody beats you again. Uh, we'll be, we'll be, please keep watching because if questions come, I will ask you to call in and then we'll feature you again. Is that okay? I'll be, I'll, I'll be on standby, sir. Please do. Okay. Thank, Thank you very you much, Honorable Kenneth Brandy from Germany. The last question for this section to you. So tell us in 30 seconds what you want to do again for or your state if you are elected. Honorable. My, my people will be my concern. Okay. I'm going to be working for them. You know, we have numerous problems in, in Oyo State. Okay. We have to work. This, is a, this should be a new beginning for us. Okay. You know, we, we have been doing things, you know, in a particular way. We should start to think differently. Right. You know, um, it's going to be an inclusive thing. I'm going to be having, you know, uh, town hall meetings with my people. Are you going to remember us when you, after, if you have spent one year there, will you come back and say, this is what I have done? Obviously, I'll do that. Okay, we want um, to, a promise. I don't know when you are going back to Nigeria to start campaigning, but let's have you before you go. Okay. Honorable Ademola Alalade, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, when we come back, we'll be having more guests, uh, those who want to run Nigeria. Don't go away, we'll be right back.